Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon, <laughs> wherever you are. Um, thank you very much for joining me for um, another of our live streams. Um, I'm Chris Calcutt, a product specialist at Novation. And um, yeah, in this, uh, this particular um, live stream, we're going to do something, I think, um, yeah, this is something that I'm really quite keen to talk about. This is um, working with microtuning. Um, and we're going to be taking a look at um, a couple of synthesizers, uh, Base Station 2 and the Peak Synthesizer, um, which are essentially um, uh, synthesizers that allow us to play around with the tuning systems uh, that we um, that we can work with. And um, yeah, and I think it's a really fascinating subject, a really um, quite an important subject as well, I think. So we're going to be taking a, a good look at kind of how we can use both Peak and the Base Station to explore microtunings, different tuning systems, and, um, and, and basically how, to, how we can experiment with that sort of stuff as well. Um, but also, um, we're going to take a look at something which is a recent discovery um, <laughs> that, uh, that I've kind of made, and that is um, we're going to be looking at a piece of software um, as well called Lima. Now, um, Lima has been developed by uh, Chaim Alami and um, uh, his collaborators, Counterpoint. And this is a fantastic way, a really a great way uh, to be able to explore the world of microtunings. Um, and, I mean, uh, we're going to use this, obviously, uh, with the uh, with the Novation Synths, with the Peak and with the Base Station 2. But actually, even if you're not somebody who, who uses one of those synthesizers, uh, we're going to, you know, you can you can actually use this software um, to, uh, to to basically work with a whole um, uh, a whole. Well, pretty much anything with <laughs> music technology, really. Um, now, I'm not too sure, uh, but I think um, Akaya might be um, actually uh, with us in the chat. Uh, 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 he mentioned that he might pop by uh, throughout this session. So if you have any kind of specific questions about uh, microtuning um, and his work, which I'm going to talk a little bit about as well, um, you know, he, he hopefully will be there to maybe answer some of those questions. Um, but I think... Um, what we'll do first of all is, um, well, I should say as well. Now, this um, uh, this particular live stream is actually um, kind of a, a revisit of a live stream that I did last year. Um, unfortunately, that particular live stream was fraught with a lot of uh, technical gremlins, um, a lot of issues with the um, with the bandwidth that I was using <laughs> on the internet, and it and it didn't really. Um, yeah, it wasn't particularly good looking. So we, we decided to sort of uh, take that one down. But it is a, definitely a subject that I wanted to revisit. Um, and so hopefully um, everything should go according to plan this evening. Um, and yeah, we'll, 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 well, we'll have a bit of fun actually working with different microtunings. Um, now, I guess one of the first things that we should do is to put things really into kind of context and, you know, ask ourselves the question, you know, what is tuning? Now, if you are a synth person, um, uh, I guess like um, like I am, you know, we use the word oscillators um, pretty much <laughs> on a daily basis, I guess. You know, the oscillator is, is a core aspect of any synthesizer. And, you know, the oscillators are really um, uh, aspects of the synthesizer that produce... Well, they produce waveforms, of course, and these waveforms can take on different shapes. And those different shapes give us different, what we call timbres, different kind of qualities um, uh, to the sound. And, you know, that's kind of one of the things they do. They allow us to kind of fundamentally have a core shape to the sound that we're working with. But if you think of the word oscillation, an oscillator oscillates, um, you know, you can kind of start to imagine that an oscillation is kind of um, a, a movement within a period of time. It's, it's moving, the waveform shape is moving within a period of time. And the oscillators, of course, also produce our pitch. Now, pitch and obviously tuning are pretty uh, intertwined and, and are, are, are kind of fundamental to each other. Um, so, you know, what is pitch? Well, um, pitch is kind of measured in um, 
cycles per second, let's say. So if we can imagine, you know, um, one sine wave in one second, this is going to be one hertz. Hertz is the measurement that we use uh, to measure frequency, or if you like, how uh, how often <laughs> an, an oscillation um, is kind of registered. So um, one hertz is one cycle or one period of this waveform um, in, in, in one second. Um, two cycles of the waveform, so let's say we have two sine waves in a second, then that's going to be two hertz, <laughs> and so on and so forth. So the now, so how does this relate to pitch? Well, um, if we imagine, um, as we increase the amount of hertz, as we increase the frequency of the uh, these cycles per second, we're going to increase the pitch. So the more hertz, the higher the value of hertz, the higher the pitch. So... Yeah, so how, I mean, how does this kind of apply to music? Well, I'm just going to switch over um, to uh, uh, this uh, shot here. And let's apply this specifically um, to, well, to um, uh, to an instrument. To the, well, we'll use the bass station too as a controller. And we're going to actually use it as a controller um, for the peak. So I'm just going to initialize the peak here. Switch to a sine wave, a nice soft sine wave to work with. Now... Um, quite uh, handily, uh, 440 hertz is the note A. Um, now, that means every every second there are going to be 440 waveforms crammed into that second, if you like. That's the speed uh, that we need to produce uh, the note A. Now, um, the note A is really kind of a notion, I suppose, more than anything else. It's the it's what we call the note A, but essentially it's just a frequency. You know, it's 440 hertz. Now, if I press this note here, which is the note A, oh, <laughs> and take my arpeggiator off because that's not going to help. But hopefully you can see, yeah, there we go. We've got the tuner up. And the tuner is registering 440 hertz. So, um, now, as I say, 440 hertz this is all kind of kind of yeah there's, there's lots of arguments about where true a should be but as i say it doesn't really matter i mean obviously there's you know there's, there's arguments even about you know a should be uh, pitched at 432 hertz um i mean and, and again if, if kind of thinking about sort of kind of orchestral tunings in the western um musical kind of uh, uh, system, you know, A has wavered between, you know, very kind of lower A's, like four, four thirty, all the way, you know, up to sharper A's, like a four, four, four. But for now, uh, um, uh, at this point in time, um, kind of in Western kind of convention, we class four hundred and forty hertz as being the note A. Now, if I play an octave higher we're going to get 880 hertz. Now, obviously, you can see here on my tuner, this is registering at 879.9. Now, that's pretty, pretty close. Um, uh, that should really read 8, 880. And I, I don't, I'm not too sure. I'm using uh, Live 11 here and just the tuner built into Live 11. And I've tried on all my different synths here. And in the past, I've had a true 880 on my higher A. <laughs> um, and, you know, we, I, I've tried digital synthesizers, um, all, all the kind of things that are using digital control. And I should expect 880, but we've got 879. And I guess that's near enough. That's near enough. But if I go up an octave again, we double 880 and we get to 1760, 1760, which is two times 880. So each time we're doubling this frequency. And actually, if I half the frequency, if I go an octave below, you'll see now we've got 220. So these are pretty convenient numbers for us to use, really. Um, and, you know, we basically the octave, this kind of doubling of the frequency is really kind of what we call the most consonant type of sound that we can that we can have really you know they're very very related um and actually when you're listening it might even be difficult to tell that there are actually two notes there you know we've got the same note an octave apart they're very very heavily related to each other now let's think about that 
and let's just take a look at the layout that we have here in front of us. Um, here is the note A, and here is the note A. Now, in between these two notes, we've got 11 notes. So we're kind of dividing this up into 12 equal parts. Um, and this is known as, well, on the keyboard here, we're divided into what we call equal temperament or EDO, equal division, oct equal division of octaves. And basically what we've got here is kind of, it's quite a strange situation really. Um, we've got kind of an and harmonically not quite pure layout <laughs> of of these notes um but the thing is it's incredibly convenient now obviously we're here working on a type kind of a 12 note based system um and you know the the keyboard has really kind of cemented uh for you know it probably in quite, quite an unfortunate way really but it's cemented the um these frequencies as being kind of almost set as the frequencies that we have to use. Um, now, the problem, as I mentioned, is that this is not actually purely correct. These are approximations of the notes dividing this kind of octave, this doubling of, of frequency, into 12 different positions. Um, I mean, if you think about music from um, other uh, uh, other cultural backgrounds, for example, um, in, in Middle Eastern uh, in Middle Eastern music, we, we have um, a, a, a system called macarms, I believe. Now, I have to say, I am absolutely no expert in this kind of area. So, uh, there are people who are far more versed in this kind of world than I am. Um, and you know, I, I do I beg you, just go and go and explore this because it's a really quite fascinating fascinating thing but the macam the middle eastern kind of system tuning system is based around divisions of 17 uh, 19 24 25 or even 53 divisions of that octave that 440 to 880 um and and also north indian ragas as well they um i believe they are dividing the octave that again that 8 440 to 880 into 22 divisions so you know by just thinking of the 12 notes that we have is really quite kind of limiting in so many different ways um you know we have a lot of space in between all of these notes that we can go into and explore um and indeed other culturals other uh, other cultural uh, music is very much based in that kind of uh, in that kind of tradition where you're not just using these uh, these 12 notes to provide you with all of the notes available there are notes in between um and again it's a really quite a fascinating thing so well let's have a little think about kind of um uh, sort of why we are set to 12 notes like this because i think again this is really quite a fascinating sort of subject so here we have our octave so we have four uh, well let's go up we'll go to 440 and we'll go to 880 now uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use the peak and i'm going to bring in a second oscillator here uh, let's go to a sine wave again so we have two oscillators producing exactly the same pitch now here on the peak i have what's called a coarse tuning and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to increase this um through an octave range and we're going to just take a listen to kind of how you know some of the some of the kind of the things that we hear um as we move through this so as i said at, be, at the beginning you know we have 440 and 880 this is a very consonant um and by that i mean i guess you know these these are very very related um, harmonies that kind of sit very well to our ears um, so let's just go for this run up so I'm going to just increase this second oscillator now now you can hear instantly that we've got some interesting beating going on um, now we're getting into an area now that is maybe perhaps a little bit more consonant here but we'll keep moving Okay, that's not too bad. Now, this is quite interesting. This is quite quite a nice kind of pure sound. Let's go up again. 
So here we're getting into... Okay, now that's a very interesting relationship. Let's go past this. Remember, that was on that was on 7. Let's just go back here. That's on 7. Okay, let's go. Carry on. And you can hear now things are starting to really kind of be quite unusual. And it's now starting to... Yeah. And if you get towards the very top, that's really quite what I would say is sort of almost dissonant, really. That's And then we get to the octave. But let's go back to that seven. That's quite an interesting one, because really... Now, this is the fifth. And this is kind of quite a consonant sound. In fact, this is kind of regarded, really, as probably the most um, consonant sound after the octave. The fifth. Okay. Now, what's quite interesting here is if we look at our um, our values so here is our oh hang on let's just take out that second oscillator so here is 440 here is 880 and now if I play the note that is the fifth of the scale of the tuning system okay now you see that is six well that's a little bit flatter than 660 that's just a little bit under 660 now, 660, if we think about the relationship... Now, sorry about all of this mathematics. I am absolutely no mathematician whatsoever. Um, but hopefully, it's, 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 it, you know, they're easy enough under, numbers to understand. So we've got 440, 880, and then exactly halfway in between, we have 660. Now, if you notice on this keyboard, we're given 659, well, 0 0.2 here. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, this is kind of almost a perfect fifth. It's called a perfect fifth, that interval. Uh, but it's kind of almost a perfect fifth. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to, um, on my peak here, I'm going to switch to a different tuning system. So if I go back to the first page in the oscillator menu, here we go. Sorry, the second page, I beg your pardon. We have tuning table. Um, and in the tuning table here is set to zero. So this is just using a standard um, equal temperament kind of setup. But I'm going to go to tuning table one. And now I can start to edit this tuning table um, and essentially change what this E note here is actually going to be pitched to. So let's go to my settings page. And if I just go back to tuning table number one. Actually, yeah, let's just bring that down. Okay, so here... Oh, hang on, let's just... Uh, wrong thing, that's right. Here we go. So if I press E, E4, E4, and I get zero as the kind of value. So, now, what's interesting here is... Look at that um, spectra, uh, uh, that stereoscope, sorry. And you can see how that's kind of moving around. Now, that's so, sort of suggesting that we're not kind of mathematically kind of properly in, in tune. We're not really 100% aligned in terms of harmony. So watch what happens now as, as I just retune this E note to roughly about two and a half cents, which is one hundredth of a semitone higher than the keyboard or the normal equal tuning is actually giving me. And can you see now I've gone, well, here it's five, a retune uh, factor of five here which is essentially we are we have 256 steps between each semitone in the tuning table uh, system that we have in peak there we go and you can see now that it's pretty much well on, on the stereoscope here it's just locked in now let's just move it one step back and all of a sudden we start to get this movement back in to the actual relationship between the two notes. And if we go back to zero, which is of course where the standard kind of tuning of the keyboard is, it's now pretty, it's actually, <laughs> it was kind of really quite wrong now. So hopefully you can start to see that even though we have this kind of perfect fifth interval and our ears are pretty, you know, um, pretty okay with this interval, I think, you can see actually harmonically or in math, kind of mathematically, I guess, it's not really 100% pure. So let's um, let's just retune that one. There we go. Now, so that we've got we've got one of the notes now in a scale, 
we've got the fifth note. So how do we get the other notes as well? Now it does get pretty <laughs> mathematic, mathematic now, mathematically kind of advanced now, and this is a little bit beyond me. But what I'll do is let's move now to the Lima software, um, and let's just switch back to camera here. So here, um, actually, yeah, yeah, we'll switch to this camera. So in Lima now, now this is the, and I definitely thoroughly recommend you go to see this. So I'm going to, you can't see my mouse, unfortunately, so I'll have to kind of describe what I'm doing with this, but I'm going to create a new tuning system. Now, by the way, the link for Lima is down in the description below, um, uh, but also, you know, you can see the email address, uh, not email address, beg your pardon, <laughs> the web address up at the top here. And I'm going to hit create new tuning system. Okay, now um, for argue, well, just for ease of use, we're going to go to A equals 440. So I'm just going to choose the note A, and we can see here I have my uh, frequency, my, the 440 hertz that we had before. Now I can move this around and choose the frequency that I want, but I'm going to, uh, let's see, can I go back to 440? I think so. If I go, if we go back to A4. There we go. So I'm going to stick with this because that's obviously what my key, uh, my my keyboard, the base station is tuned to. In fact, sorry, the peak is tuned to at this point. And we'll hit next. And now we're given this this kind of uh, sort of little system here. And this is where things can get quite interesting. So here we have one a ratio of one to one, and that is going to be our A um, note. Now a ratio of two to one. Remember, if we double the, uh, the frequency, we get the octave higher. So over on the right hand side, you can see we have this, uh, this, uh, this two to one frequency, uh, sorry, two to one ratio, I beg your pardon. And here in the middle, we have this, um, this E note. Um, and that is, well, basically bang on 700 cents in the equal tempered keyboard. Um, but actually we found out that it's slightly out. Now, in actual fact, this has a ratio value of three to two, um, which is basically one and a half. So if you think about it, three to two is three halves. If you think of a <laughs> fraction of a half, it's one over two. Two over two is the same as one. Three over two is one and a half, basically, if you like. So in terms of ratio, three to two, is dividing it or timesing it, I beg your pardon, by one and a half. So let's put that ratio in. And you can see now that's gone straight in on the E there. So by that, we can kind of define that um, essentially um, we're kind of, you know, we're basically adding one and a half. <laughs> one, well, we're adding an extra half of the original one <laughs> on top of itself. And that's bringing us to this fifth point here. Now we have a whole variety of other relationships. Now, if you remember when we did our little test, so let's just um, uh, do the quick test again. So here and bring up the second oscillator and we ran up this scale. Now we've got some nice consonant sounds, but when we get to this one here, this is quite interesting. This is um, basically a fourth. So this in the key of A is gonna be A to D. So I turn that down, A. There we go. Now, actually, if we kind of think about um, what that relationship is, now, this is actually a relationship of four to three. So if I, or if you like, um, one and one third <laughs> of the original value. So I'm going to go four over three. Okay. And there we go. We've got our fourth note and that's pretty much bang on. Okay, now we have other consonant notes in this scale as well. So let's just bring uh, the second oscillator up and just run again. So the other kind of important ones in like, let's if we think about major and minor scales are basically going to be, now there's the minor third and there's the major third. Actually, the uh, relationship, uh, the ratios that we have for these, again, are quite nice numbers, really. So, for example, the minor third is six to five, or if you like in decimal terms, <laughs> 1.2. So let's go to that and we should get, um, uh, yeah, we should get a C, which is a minor third above A. Okay, and let's do, for good measure, let's go to f uh, five to four which is one and a quarter, if you like, 1.25, <laughs> five to four, is now gonna give us the major. 
Now, what's interesting here is if you look at the um, at, at, at these kind of relationships above here at the very top, we've got our kind of equal temperament, and then here you can see that this five to four is of ever so slightly, well, not ever so slightly, quite a bit flat or lower down than the C sharp, which should be the major third. And the uh, six to five ratio is just a bit sharper than the C, which should be the minor third. So we can see that this equal temperament is really kind of, kind of knocking things out a little bit. Now, let me go back to our shot here. Let's go and uh, yeah, bring that in. Okay. Now, this is a nice little experiment, I always think. So here we've got, and, and hopefully you can hear this. Um, I, this is something that I, I kind of, uh, I can always kind of uh, listen out for. But basically, let's go to, um, so there's our A. We've got two oscillators playing. Let's bring up to the fourth. Uh, semitone which is the major third a major third is four semitones above now okay now let's just knock this down ever so slightly 14 cents 14 hundredths of a semitone now this is so much more pure sounding in terms of the relationship between the two notes than and now this is the, the, the if I turn it this back to zero now the fine tune this will bring us back to again an equal tempered um, third now to me that now it's very very subtle and I kind of really hope that you can hear this <laughs> maybe YouTube on a live stream is not the best place to kind of uh, uh, for critical listening for this but let's just listen to that again this is this is now detuned. 14 cents and I'm going to bring it back up in a second now to me that starts to grate a little bit and it's it, it's really strange because you know I've kind of I've lived my whole life um you know working really within these kind of these western conventions of of, of, of music theory you know I kind of a uh, bit of background I suppose you know I kind of a, I'm a bit of a product of the music education system here in the UK um, you know I kind of started piano lessons at a very early age uh, studied trombone um, at well at the, the Royal Northern College of Music at the junior school and the Saturday school there for four years before then going to to university to, to study trombone and composition um, so, you know, I'm kind of very much kind of entrenched in this kind of this 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 sort of uh, um, uh, Western convention of how to work and think about music. And I have to say, uh, throughout the whole of that kind of education that I had, I was never really kind of kind of taught anything about tuning, which is kind of crazy, because if you think about what tuning is, it's one of the most fundamental parts of of music, of music creation. It really is. Um, and, you know, I guess when I was playing the trombone, I was using my ear and just sort of adjusting the slide until things sounded right. But at no point really was I kind of, was it explained to me about kind of how all of this sort of stuff works. Anyway, well, let's go back. And I'm going to very quickly now, um, I'm going to carry on sort of firing in some of these ratios into, um, yeah, into, uh, uh, yeah, into Lima here. And we'll see if we can kind of get somewhere with it. So um, we've done the uh, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Maybe that's a bit loud. I'll just knock that down a touch. Sorry about that. Um, now, the next kind of consonant notes are going to be the major sixth and the minor sixth. Now, I, you know, we, you can do a bit of research on this. It's a bit of a rabbit hole to go down as to why we go for these kind of uh, temperaments. But basically, I'm going to go for eight to five. And this is going to give me my major sixth. And then if I go five to three, that's going to give me my uh, minor, uh, minor sixth. So we've now got kind of six of the kind of what are classed as the most consonant um, uh, essentially intervals or relationships between the original notes and um, uh, yeah and and the note that we get to so major third minor third fourth and fifth and all that sort of stuff so how do we get the other notes in between as well so um, yeah now this is quite an interesting one so 
we thought before, or we, we looked at before, how we can use basically 1.5 over 1, <laughs> or if you like, 3 over 2, um, is basically the same ratio. And that gives us this kind of most consonant um, uh, kind of uh, 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 frequency that we have, the fifth. And then really the next most consonant is going to be the fourth note, the perfect fourth, and that's 4 over 3. So what about if we apply the, the idea, the notion of one and a half over one, but we apply it to four over three instead. So if we take four and add another half of four on top of it, we get six. And if we go six over three, well, six over three is pretty much identical to two over one if you think about it if you divide six by two uh hang on <laughs> let's try that again if we divide six yeah divide six by two we get three and then yeah so basically <laughs> lost my train of thought there <laughs> told you maths was not my strong point let's do that again so four um uh, plus another half is six over three that's right so if we divide those two by three. That's it. If we divide it by three, <laughs> two threes are six. And of course, th you know, three divided by th uh, three is one. <laughs> My wife is a math teacher. Would you believe it? Um, anyway, um, but the point is that if I add six, if I go, in fact, yeah, let's just try this. So I'll go six over three. Okay. And it actually brings us back down. To that same note because we're working in an octave system so you know we we're not kind of pushing past this over two over to one so let's what what do i mean by that well let's try the next one so let's take the uh, minor third six over five and let's go one and a half times six which is nine so uh half of six is three six plus three is nine if we go nine and then we go over five Okay, um, what happens there? Okay, so now C, an approximation of C here, and a fifth above C is a G. So you can see there that we've got a really sharp G going on. So we can carry on and do this. And basically, if we kind of add all of this up, so let me just carry on. So let's go uh, uh, five over four. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. So that's going to be 7.5 over 4, which is going to be the same as 15 over 8. So doubling that up to so 15 over 8. And apologies for this this kind of maths lesson, as I say. So we're talk we, st we are talking about music here, I promise. Um, okay, it's so 15 over 8. So now we've got, yep, yeah, a fifth above C sharp, which is G sharp. Um, and we've done the 4 over 3. Let's go 3 over 2. Um, if we go for a, uh, a, yeah, so let's go three over two and what happens if we go for that? So let's, yeah, so we get 4.5 over two. So half of three is 1.5 plus three is 4.5 over two. But if we want to put that into kind of easier numbers, 4.5 times two is nine and two times two is four. So I think if we go, <laughs> this is where it might all go wrong. Let's go nine over four again. This ooh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh, hang on, no, I've done, I've done it wrong. I think it's nine over eight. Ah, there we go. Yeah. So what's happening here is we've got a B, which is good. That's what I want. E to B is a fifth on the keyboard, but we're pushing past that octave. Now, of course, we found out before if we half the value we get the octave below so we've gone we've pushed past the the two to one octave the a equals 880 we've pushed past that with this ratio but again if we half it we can bring it back in into the range of the notes that we're working with so we can carry on um let's see well anyway no i'll tell you what let's move on but basically you can carry on and carry on and eventually you can get to, um, and I'm going to go to this little image here. Let's see. Okay. 
Now here is at the bottom, here is the kind of what we call just scale. I believe this is a just scale. And this is me going through all these ratios and basically getting to 12 notes in the scale. And you can see here, if you compare to the equal temperament, which is now basically just dividing that same range, that same frequency range into 12, it becomes kind of pretty, uh, pretty well approximated, I guess. You can't really argue, I guess, it's not too far away. And the problem here is, I guess, that it's just really convenient. You can see that these 12 notes here kind of are near, close by, um, and so, they're kind of just adjusted to being, you know, d dividing this range into 12. And so with that, that gives a mechanism, uh, a keyboard mechanism like this, the opportunity to kind of divide it into these 12 notes. But as you can see, we're kind of missing out on a heck of a lot of other notes that are that exist you know other frequencies other um other territories that we can explore with our music and so this is where really kind of thinking about microtuning and how you can kind of use microtuning to experiment with how things sound can be a really fascinating and an interesting world to to inhabit now we need to kind of think about how we can how we can do this on these devices. So let's go back down to our uh, our shot here. Oh, sorry, my head's missing. Let's go. <laughs> let's go back here. There we go. Um, and so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go. Um, yeah, actually no. Let's go back to here. We'll go back to Lima. And rather than stick with the tuning system that I kind of half created. Let's switch the tuning system to something else. In fact, no, let's go back to the beginning. Now I'm gonna quite randomly create a tuning, okay? And I'm not really gonna pay too much attention to kind of what I'm doing here. I'm not really crafting it, I'm doing it live. It's just gonna be what it is. So I'm just gonna add some interesting kind of different notes. So let's go like this. So now I've got one, two, three, four, and let's get some close together. Oh, that's maybe a bit too close to... Actually, no, that's kind of nice. That's a very subtle change. But let's bring in another one here and here. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, you know, I'm really very... I mean, this is kind of shameful, but I'm randomly doing this. But just for... Uh, just to kind of show what's going on. So one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let's go for a quite a sharp kind of last note. There we go. So I should have now essentially a scale of quite randomly chosen uh, microtunings. Apologies for that. Uh, yeah, they're quite randomly chosen, but they are different to what you'd be kind of used to listening to. Okay, so now we've kind of created this tuning system here. Let's go to next. And this is going to open up this kind of wheel here. This is um, allowing us to create what's called a subset. Now, I must admit, I, I, I do need to think a little bit more about these. But basically, I can click on a note here. And I can now assign it to a key, basically. And you see here in the little keyboard pop-up, um, we've got our 12 notes that you would recognize from a keyboard. So I'm going to go here and choose the note A, and I'm just going to basically add these notes here. Now, these subsets are quite useful because sometimes you might divide um, a, a, an octave into more than uh, more than kind of the, the, the eight notes that we have. Um, but if you think about kind of what a, a, a scale is, I mean, if, again, if you if you know anything a little know anything about music theory, um, for example, a major scale is made up of essentially seven notes. C to C is all the white notes between C and C, but C is the same note. So we have seven notes. I think this is called heptatonic, and that's essentially um, a subset, if you like, of the tuning that we have. So we have 
12 notes in a chromatic um, a, a, a system, um, but a subset of those is a scale, is a, is a mode that we're in. For example, a major scale or a minor scale as well. Um, and so, yeah, you can kind of, in this section here, you can create these kind of subsets. And, and this is quite interesting as well. So, for example, you might create a, a chromatic tuning and then just kind of just want to play it with the white notes. If you think about what we're faced with here, this is, it can be quite confusing, I guess, because we're so kind of entrenched in this kind of chromatic idea, chromatic notion of a keyboard here that, um, you know, really it's kind of very difficult to look at this and break away from that kind of, you know, relationship between what you see here on the keys and what you're hearing. Um, but don't forget, on a synthesizer, these are just switches. These are not kind of hammers hitting a string like you have with a, with a piano. These are literally just switches that are starting some information inside here kind of uh, well digitally from a from a keyboard like this creating these analog um uh, electronic switches uh, electronic um uh, components here to create the sound so these are just switches i mean if you are kind of a bit overfaced with trying to do this on uh, you know on a keyboard using these 12 notes um then perhaps you could consider uh, you know going for um, something like a launch pad which really breaks away from from this kind of this layout you know it's quite agnostic the way that the, the, the launch pad is laid out but anyway for now let's carry on so I've created my kind of mappings here and now I have the option now you can't really see here unfortunately my mouse is not picked up um, on, on the screen but basically if you look to the right there under where it says MIDI output the box that I'm kind of highlighting there's a switch that says export or a button that says export Scala file so I'm going to do that I'm going to hit export Scala file and that's going to ask me if I want to export the tuning system or export the subset the subset as I say is me kind of attaching these keys um, to the frequencies, the the, 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 you know, yeah, the frequencies that I've chosen. So I'm going to hit export subset, and that downloads here this little file, lima.scl. Now, the next thing I'll do is I'm going to move to components. Here we go, components. Now, let's just start from scratch here on components. I'm going to go to my base station, two and I'm going to go to the tuning tables, which is from the list of things that we've got up at the top. So go to tuning tables, and now I get into the area where I can now install a tuning system into the base station two. Now the base station two has an MTS, a, a MIDI uh, tuning system. I believe that's what it's called at least anyway. MTS kind of is the, is the part of MIDI that allows me to say, okay, this is a C, but actually I don't want you to play kind of a traditional C. I want you to move the frequency of that note around. And what's really nice is that I can add these tunings directly into the base station. So um, let's, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to hit upload tuning table, which is this switch here. And again, you can't see this, but it's taking me straight to my kind of, well, downloads folder, which is where I've saved it to. And I'm going to open Scala file. And then you should see now I have 12 tones. They're the tones that I created. And I can now choose where I'm going to send that scale um, uh, to yeah to basically to the um, to the device so I'm going to choose table 8 um, and select table to override I should have pointed that out sorry you don't see the drop down again but basically um, the select table to overwrite uh, drop down box I've chosen number 8 and I'm going to send it to the base station 2 that's now sent the tuning that I've just made live on air to my base station two. So let's go now to the base station two. Uh, here we go. And if I now I'm going to go to yeah I'm going to basically find um a, a, um an initialized patch. They're right up at the top end of this uh, this instrument I think, but that's not. Oh, hang on, that's the peak we're listening to. Let's go to base station. There we go. Um, yeah. So I just got this patch and here just to prove it I have a chromatic um, equal tempered uh, scale okay I've got a ton of reverb on there I hope you forgive me I do enjoy a bit of reverb on the bass station okay so I've got my scale there now if I press function and tap tune twice 
I get to my tuning tables. This is one of the features that were added to the base station um, as one of the firmware updates. And actually, basically, if I just tap across here now to number eight, okay, we should find that now, what well, we've just heard that chromatic scale, but this is the scale that I just created in Lima and sent directly to my base station too. <laughs> That's pretty close. It's quite interesting. It sounds pretty close to the uh, <laughs> to the the chromatic, but it's not. It's just um, yeah. If I uh, let's just. I mean, I've got some other tuning tables in here, so let's just see what else we've got. So these are quite unusual sounding things, but that's the whole point to it, you know? It's not, we're just breaking away from that typical kind of kind of thing. Now, let's have a quick look at my, uh, the one that I created in Lima. In fact, let's just have a listen to it here. If I hit the, oh, hang on, I've got to go to the, yeah, if I hit this play button, hang on, beg your pardon. Oh, okay, because I'm zoomed. Zoomed right in to fit it onto my screen. Let's just try this. Yeah, I'm going to click here. <laughs> and again, tuning table number eight. I can't believe I made a tuning table. A tuning system that was almost shows how it's all ing how totally ingrained in me it is. <laughs> Brilliant. But anyway, the whole point is that this Lima software is allowing you to create your own tuning tables. And again, I could go back and say, okay, once again, I'm going to very quickly create another random tuning table. Let's go here. And this time I'm just going to put some random um, notes in. And again, maybe I should just not look at the, um, uh, at, the, at the equal temperament kind of stuff at the top here. Maybe that's what the, the problem is. But if I just hit next... Okay, once again, um, I'm actually, this time, I'm not going to create the subset. I'm just going to export the Scala file. I think this should work. And it's just giving me the Scala file immediately. Now, if I go back to components and I go upload tuning table, again, you can't see this, but I'm just selecting the tuning table I've downloaded. Here it is. It's loaded in. And now I'm going to hit center base station on table eight. Now, let's see which table are we on. We're on table eight. Okay, great. So let's see what happens now. And if I start to play around with the sound a little bit. And so when you start to play around with this, you can start to hear, you can kind of get some quite interesting musical sounds. Again, I'm kind of just randomly making this, but that's kind of something that I might be able to use. Now, um, oh, sorry, you didn't see any of that, did you? <laughs> so for melodies and that sort of thing, this can be really, really powerful. Now, sometimes with harmonies, it can be quite difficult to kind of get kind of harmonies that are always going to work together. But certainly for melodies and that sort of thing, it works really well. Now, listen, I'm just going to turn down the bass station because I do want to uh, spend a little moment also showing you how we can do this directly on the uh, on the peak synth itself as well. So um, once again, let's I'm going to initialize my patch and yeah, tuning table one. If I play notes, uh, yeah, we got. Yeah, I'll just bring the filter down. You can see the notes changing here as I press them on the keyboard. Okay, so in my oscillator menu, I'm not set to listen to a tuning table, so I'm going to go to tuning table one. And now in my settings page here, I'm looking at tuning table one. So now I can say, okay, C3, we'll keep C as a kind of a central focused point. I will not change the frequency of that, but C sharp, I'm going to retune that. I'm going to just kind of play around again, just do this randomly just to kind of show you how kind of how easy and quick it is. Let's go down and touch there. So I'm really kind of just literally just messing around here. Now, of course, when you're creating your own tuning systems, you're going to spend a bit more time and kind of just work it, work it through. 
So you can just get into some nice kind of territories by just, again, just messing around. And oh, Yeah, I'm just random, yeah, randomly doing it. Why not? Well, we, we want C4 to be there, so... You can hear straight away I've kind of just got something that's totally different now. And if I just start to play around a little bit with the, the, the patch that we've got, let's just bring in the second oscillation, detune it a touch. You can hear now there's some interesting things that are just occurring that if I switch back to the tuning table chromatic, it's just interesting how you can just get these different flavors and different sounds, different tunings. Just out of what we're working with. And that, of course, we can do directly on the hardware, on, on the Peak Synth itself. Um, also, that is totally available. I've got the Summit over here as well. Of course, the Summit synthesizer has is essentially the same uh, engine as we have with the Peak. Um, and, um, of course, on, on the Summit instrument as well, we've got tuning tables that we can choose from. And actually, we have on the base station, so we've got eight tables that we can load and save into. And on the Peak, I think we've got, I think it's 16. If I go to Components, it will actually tell me. Uh, let's go to Peak. Once again, I can load in directly from uh, components again if I want to, but let's see. Yeah, I have 16 tuning tables that I can I can I can work with um, directly on on the peak. And um, once I've created a tuning table, I can just simply whilst I'm on the settings page here, if I just power this down now, I will lose it. I have to instigate it. I have to tell it to save that um, tuning table on the peak. So I just hit the save button in here. And that will then always re, uh, recall uh, uh, that tuning table through power cycles as well. So, yeah, I'm going to finish up, I guess, now. It's been, well, probably just a touch under an hour, I think, since since we started. I'm going to very quickly, I've, I've not had one eye whatsoever on the chat here. So um, let's kind of just have a look. I mean, wow. Yeah, there's lots of comments in here. <laughs> so I'm guessing that we've, yeah, we've probably... Um, got quite a lot of people talking about um micro tuning stuff um but basically yeah um yeah here we go yeah just lots of people saying hello and all that sort of thing great 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 <laughs> brilliant so basically yeah i mean um yeah not too many questions that i could see but basically yeah we're we're yeah, I'm going to play a little jam, I think. <laughs> That's what I do. Why not? I'll not? Why not end it with a little jam? Um, hopefully it's been interesting to you. I mean, as, as I said at the very beginning, you know, it's to me, it's absolutely fascinating, this stuff. It really is. Um, you know, as I say, I kind of I'm a product of this music education system, but this is new uncharted territory for me now. You know, I was thinking about synthesis. I, you know, played a lot of guitar in bands and that sort of thing. And that was, you know, what I did when I was a bit younger. And as I got a bit older, I've kind of moved into just exploring the world of synthesizers. And one of the big things I love, the thing, in fact, probably the thing I love most about synthesizers is that I'm in charge of the sound. I create the sound from scratch. You know, I'm working with these oscillators, these core sort of parts that just kind of... Yeah, I just bring together and use filters and modulation and, and, and effects just to kind of create my own sound. That's the thing that I really love to work with. And now that I kind of, you know, this, this, we have micro tunings as a possibility for what we're doing, um, you know, and, and especially on the on these devices on the, on, you know, on the base station and, and on, on, on the peak as well. I think, you know, it, it really opens up a whole new world, a, you know, a huge new world just of, of, of experimentation and playing. Um, I mean, I, here's the thing, right? You know, obviously we have a little modular over here in the corner. And when you're working on a modular, you know, often you're not working with what you would call quantize or 
let's say, you know, on the keyboard here, we have 12 notes. These are kind of quantized, if you like. These are, you know, moving the, uh, the positions into these quantized positions, like exactly the same as you do when you're working with beats and that sort of thing. You know, you're moving them off grid. And here on the keyboard, we have a grid. Now, in a modular system, if you're working with kind of VCOs, voltage-controlled oscillators, quite often you're not working within a grid. You're just tuning, and often by ear as well. So the notion of micro-tuning is quite, you know, it's quite kind of, you know, we are kind of entering into a world where there's a lot of kind of micro-tuning sort of music being made. But oddly enough, when you start to speak to people about micro-tuning, it becomes really scary and kind of inhibiting. And I have to admit, for me, it's been that way as well in the past. But I'm really, really fascinated by what we're doing with this, um, you know, with, with micro-tuning. Now, obviously, we've looked at Lima. We spent a good bit of our time kind of using that uh, that software really to work with the Novation uh, synthesizers here. But as I said at the beginning, Lima is not something for Novation specifically. It works really, really well with our stuff here. Uh, but Lima is very clever stuff and you can use it pretty much with any of your hardware synths or even software synths as well. Again, um, you know, in terms of, you know, working with your music software, your DAW, you can use Lima to actually create micro tunings and actually start to incorporate that, um, you know, into your DAWs. And that's, I think, uh, Chaim's uh, kind of, uh, a kind of real kind of motivation behind what he's doing is the fact that um, so often the tools that we are given for making electronic music are just fixed in this kind of a mode of you only have these 12 notes, these 12 kind of common notes that we find on the piano. And it's very, very difficult without workarounds to break free of that mold, break free of those kind of uh, 12 notes that, that, are, that are available. And that in many ways is eroding a lot of kind of possibilities, certainly that we have, you know, it's kind of taking away um, the uh, the ability to work in between the notes. Why would you want to take away that, ab in a that ability? You know, wh why would you do that? Um, but also, you know, there's a very kind of um, a, a strong kind of, uh, a, a, a cultural message behind that as well because as i said again at the very beginning you know um uh, traditional uh, music from say north india with the ragas or, or middle eastern uh, makam uh, systems as well tuning systems you know people in that in those uh, who who live in, in those kind of musical traditions are not given those kind of tools that they use in their own music they're being kind of prescribed what we have here which is this 12 tone equal temperament which i think in you know in many ways is um it's just kind of a shame and it's not <laughs> it's not really right so anyway right i'm gonna as i say i'm gonna try a little jam here now this could go horribly wrong as often it does um this is live so um it, yeah it could be uh, could be problematic but let's just give it a go and this is again just using a tuning uh that i made again i think it was quite randomly and what i've done is i've just i've taken the same tuning and again this is what lima is great for because i can now use the same tuning on the base station to create a tuning for the base station to and use that same tuning on the on the peak as well so um yeah, I created this tuning and then I created a little sequence on the sequencer here in the base station too. And that is sending MIDI out through to the peak here, which is basically playing exactly the same sequence on exactly the same uh, uh, micro tuning. And then um, what I've got as well is I've got a MIDI through here passing through to circuit tracks. Circuit tracks is basically getting clock. And um, also we've got this great feature on the base station too, where you can start and stop external sequences by pressing function and on. There we go. Start and stop. So what I'm going to do is just so simple. Hit a single finger down. Base station playing in the micro tuning that I created. Let's get a bit more of that echo on there, uh, that reverb. And then I'm going to just bring that kick in on the circuit. Oh, the 
peak in now of course. Just take the bass station out a little bit, I think, and add a bit of glide. This is quite nice with the micro tunings. Bring the other tracks on the peak on the uh, circuit. Now what I find with a bit of micro tuning often um, FM stuff works really well in this kind of environment as well. So in my mod matrix here, I've got a bit of FM going oscillator three to oscillator one, and then I've got another switch here, switched on the animate. So I'll press this. And the other animate, where it goes really crazy, loads of reverb. It's a bit too much. <laughs> Okay, right, bring in the base station now. Oh, actually, yeah, keep that going. What I want to do with the base station is I'm going to turn it into paraphonic now. And of course, um, what I've got with the sequence is I've got some notes overhanging, which works really, really nicely, um, feeding kind of that sort of sequence into the paraphonic mode. sequence but before I do just think about what we've been listening to for the past sort of couple of minutes it totally in a micro tuning system totally not kind of chromatic standard equal temperament type of tuning and I mean I don't know about you but I kind of like the way it sounds it's just kind of got this unusual kind of flavor to it it's very off kilter maybe it's kind of a little bit kind of oof, makes, <laughs> makes you feel a little bit kind of in a different place and I guess that's the whole point to it anyway I'm going to finish for now thanks very much for watching I hope this has been interesting I've been really kind of excited about being able to do this live stream again um, simply because you know I love to talk about kind of the products that we have of course the base station and the peak uh, but equally I think I'm really I'm really kind of blown away with the work that Chaim Alami and uh, you know his collaborators uh, counterpoint have done with uh, with Lima and I definitely encourage you to go try it out play around with it and yeah and just explore micro tunings anyway thanks very much indeed um thanks for joining me this evening and uh or morning or afternoon wherever it is you are 